Hello, child of God. I recently realized the need to add a short introduction to my prophecy and prepper videos to explain the principles which determine probability dates and the dates of the manifestations of Almighty God's judgments upon the earth. If you've already heard this short video intro, the video will start very soon. Almighty God created a garden and allowed Adam and Eve to live in the Garden of Eden as long as they did not break the one and only law. They broke the law and were driven from the garden and into hard work. The people of the earth multiplied in numbers and in sin. They did not respect that Almighty God owns the entire earth. Almighty God sent Noah, the most successful prepper in history, by the way, to preach for 120 years. The people of earth did not repent from their violence and were swept away in the flood. Noah saved his entire family by obeying God and prepping. At that point in time, all of the people of the world were under the law of God, which was written on their hearts. They had the knowledge of good and evil. They knew right from wrong. Many years later, Almighty God sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel from the slavery in Egypt. In the wilderness, they were given a new set of laws to live by. Eventually, the twelve tribes moved into the promised land and lived there for a while under the new set of laws given by Almighty God. So God was judging Israel by one set of laws, the laws of Moses, and the rest of the world by the law written on their hearts, the knowledge of good and evil. In the Hebrew law, there is a requirement to keep the seventh day holy and rest. The law also required Israel to let Almighty God's land rest on the seventh year. And again, also on the 50th year. The 50th year is called the Jubilee year. Almighty God gave them a lunar calendar to keep track of the months and all of the feasts. The children of Israel disobeyed these laws and were sent into captivity for 70 years. They were still under the law while in captivity, but Almighty God forced the land to be at rest. After 70 years, Almighty God brought some of the Israelites back to the Promised Land. And the sin cycle continued until the manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ as the King of the Jews. The Lord Jesus Christ offered Israel a new set of laws, the laws of the Kingdom of God. The Jews as a nation rejected their King and Redeemer. At this time, roughly A.D. 30, the world now had three sets of laws from Almighty God. The law written on the heart, the knowledge of good and evil, the law he gave the Hebrews, and the laws of the kingdom of God. In revenge for the rejection and the murder of his son, Almighty God allowed the Romans in A.D. 70 to destroy the land of Israel and disperse all the surviving Jews to other nations. The Jews lost all access to Almighty God's land. We will call the dispersed Jews in the world as Zion. Almighty God sees the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. He had placed prophets in many different generations to reassure that the dispersed Jews would return to the promised land one day. Almighty God never gave up on his people and he never lifted the laws of Moses from Zion. No matter what land they lived in, the law had been given to the children of Israel and it applied to them wherever they were. But God's land rested. Almighty God also promised through his prophets that the Lord Jesus Christ would one day return and that Israel would look upon him whom they had pierced. Israel became a nation in one day, May the 14th, 1948. This was a fulfillment of many prophecies. The Lord Jesus Christ told us that the generation that sees these things happen would not die before his return. The world is judged by the law of the heart, the knowledge of good and evil, Zion by the law of Moses, and born-again Christians by the laws of the kingdom of God. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one 
Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin, and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Zion's largest population outside of Israel is in the USA. They control a greatly disproportional amount of the national wealth of the USA. At present, it may be the safest place in the world for Jews to live. However, when the U.S. economy crashes, the Jews will be blamed and lose their safe haven. I believe they'll be driven to Israel. Historically speaking, Zion has always been blamed for the world's problem. Jerusalem will be trampled down under the feet of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is complete. Israel is our end time prophecy time clock. They are under the law of Moses and we can see the hand of God in the world by watching what happens to Zion and to Israel. In this video I use the lunar calendar and the law of Moses which are both still in full effect. Almighty God is speaking and sending the signs of the end times to his people. Soon he will send two prophets to preach in the streets of Jerusalem. They will be preaching repent the kingdom of God is at hand. The entire world is again deeply submerged in sin and rebellion against Almighty God. This is especially in the USA. Just as in the days of Noah, the whole world is filled with violence. Almighty God is again taking away the land from the world of sinners and allowing a few believers to survive. The only perfect preparation that we can make as preppers is have a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, to whom much is given much is expected. And now, child of God, please watch the video. Hello, child of God. The purpose of this video is to discuss the probable time of the upcoming world financial disaster by using Israel as our end time prophetic time clock. We will also discuss the upcoming four blood red moons. But first of all, a possible plan for prepping for the upcoming disasters. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Child of God, the fear of things to come can paralyze you or even kill you. There are many things that we can do as preppers, but it starts as plan your work and work your plan. For example, a building contractor that is building a large building has a plan and a time when each of his projects has to be accomplished in order to complete the entire building on time. He does not schedule the plumbers, electricians, and AC people in all at one time. His first job is to clear the lot, dig and lay the foundation, and all the other underground work. The point I'm making here is we should organize our prepping. Remember the joke, how do you eat an entire elephant? Well, one bite at a time, silly. Start by laying out a plan for a year or so. Keep your tasks and goals reasonable. Everybody wants a 100 kW generator with enough gas to run it for two years. However, for most of us, it is a totally unrealistic goal. You can only live around three days without water. So this should be our first task. Plan for the total loss of your water supply. 
Now, I do not have a bug out bag or bug out supplies. My personal plans are to stay here in my house and deal with whatever issues come my way. And being a pastor, I plan to give and share my stuff. However, this may not be a practical plan for you and your family. My home is my castle. My water supply plans are located here in the castle. I trust in Almighty God to bless and protect my house. I've set this little graft up similar to a contractor would set up his building plan. But instead of having a plan for the underground work to be done in the first month, my plan shows that water will be done in the first month. And then sometime in the second month, I'll store up the ready-to-eat meals. And sometime in the third month, I'll set up all my cooking facilities, wood burning stoves and so on, gas. And sometime in the next month, I'll ensure the boundaries around my property are as safe as I can possibly afford to make. These are just an example of my plans. You may need to bug out. You may need another piece of property and so on. But no matter what, Securing a good, clean, potable water supply should be your highest priority, and you need to do it while you still can. As an example, I break my water supply month down to weeks and even days. This graph is an example of my water supply plans. The water supply being the highest priority, it's in the first month, and I plan to do a little bit each day and accomplish something each day. I'm going to eat the elephant one day at a time. I have some water stored up in milk jugs, but I bought several gallons of Clorox. Clorox ensures that I'll be able to sanitize my entire house, even if I have dirty water, that I'll be able to treat the water that I filter to be potable water, and Clorox is an excellent item to barter later, but I feel like I cannot lose by storing up several gallons of Clorox. Well, how much Clorox should you store up? I'd say one gallon per person in your household is a pretty good rule of thumb, but that's kind of the minimum. I don't know what your budget is, but double it or triple it, it can always be used for bartering later. The largest supply of new water that I will have after the disaster will be the rain. So I am purchasing the parts and making the cuttings and getting everything fitted together so that on short notice, I can modify my rain gutters to become a water supply for flushable water, for potable water, for anything that I need water for. With this, I have rain barrels, water jugs, water barrels, filtering systems, and so on. I go each day and I do a little something else in order to increase the possibility of having plenty of water. But like I said, I'm a pastor, so I have to think a little more outside of the box. I need an excess of rainwater, and I have a plastic swimming pool that I can fold out and dump water from the gutter system into the pool, and that can be used as potable water if it's filtered and treated. And then I'm working on drilling a well on my land, and I'm already working on building the pumps. On another video, I show you an example of some real simple pumps. Later on in the month, I'll be working on the plumbing systems. The internal plumbing of the house will have to be changed for the rainwater system for my convenience. For example, a 50-gallon tank in the attic will supply enough rainwater that I can flush my toilet very often if it's plumbed in properly. So I establish all the parts that I need first. Assembly is not really that necessary at this moment. The same goes with the drains. The drainage system has to be dumped somewhere. Eventually, the drains will back up because the city won't be pumping out the sewage. The filtering systems for the potable water are absolutely necessary. And the knowledge about Clorox, filtering, flushing, how to get water to your shower is really good for your bartering systems. You'll be able to barter with the water supply if you have enough water. You'll be able to barter with the Clorox and the knowledge of how much Clorox to put in the water You'll be able to barter with assembling the water supplies for other people. How to, when to, where to. If you educate yourself greatly about water and water supplies, you'll have something to barter with, even if it's only knowledge. People will barter with. Child of God, while you're planning your water supply, do not forget your hot water tank. You may want to design and build a rainwater filter and treatment system that will pump directly into your hot water tank. It's already there and it's designed to store water. Remember the recent hype about the Mayan calendar and the end of the world in December 2012? 
I searched YouTube today for the Mayan calendar 2012, end of the world, and there were about 156,000 hits. One video received almost 12 million hits on a subject that was purely hype and fantasy. People made fortunes with books and movies on a completely wrong, superinflated theory. I said that as an introduction to the sign of the four blood red moons. There are people now selling books and movies on hype and fear. The four blood red moons are more of a blinking yellow light as a sign to Israel than an end of the world siren. Forgive me as I condense a bunch of end time prophecies down in a summary. One of the signs that the Lord Jesus Christ warned us about was the moon turning to blood. Blood red moons are a sign. However, volcanic ash in the atmosphere and many other things will cause the sun to be black as sackcloth and the moon turn to blood. Almighty God is an intentionally invisible God. And he normally uses acts of nature to accomplish his will. Zion, Israel, and Jerusalem are our end-time prophetic time clocks. And we have over 3,000 years of prophecy puzzle pieces that fit together perfectly to make a complete picture. What makes the upcoming four blood-red moons special is Israel. In the 20th century, there were five tetrads. In the 16th century, there were eight tetrads. Almost every century has tetrads, without any of them being a sign of the end of the world event. I'm not attempting to insult your intelligence by assuming that you would be swept away with all that hype. I'm just saying that the fundraising hype and books are coming. But Jerusalem is the prophetic timepiece. Israel tells time by the moon cycle under the law. And I define Zion as the Jews everywhere in our generation, and Israel as the nation of Israel. Zion gave birth to Israel. Israel became a nation in one day, May the 14th, 1948, and was a fulfillment of many prophecies. Zion is still under the law and is expected to proceed by the law until they believe in Christ the Messiah. So when I speak of the Jubilee year and the sabbatical years, these are prophecy pieces that fit into the end time prophecy picture. Zion is judged for obeying and disobeying the law. Israel is defended because of the prophetic promises. Zion has never been delivered of the law. Since the time of Moses, they have always been under the law. They have always been blessed for keeping the law. They have always been cursed for breaking the law. And the law requires them to work six and rest one. The law requires them to allow the land to rest on the Sabbath year and on the Jubilee year, the 50th year. The blessings are there if they do it. The curses are there if they do not do it. Now let us look at the upcoming sabbatical year between the 25th of September 2014 and 13th of September 2015. That is a sabbatical year. The year before that is a year of preparation where the blessings come in, the double harvest, the bumper crop, to give the agricultural blessings in order to feed the nation during the sabbatical year. Well, this for us is a year of preparation between the 5th of September 2013 and the 24th of September 2014. Roughly in the middle of this year of preparation, April the 15th, 2014, is the first of these four total lunar eclipses. The U.S. economy is like a drunken sailor stumbling and stumbling and stumbling you know he's going to fall but you don't know exactly when at the same time the sabbatical year is coming up which is a time of judgment on zion worldwide this blood red moon that comes in at april the 15th 2014 absolutely nothing bad has to happen that day it's a sign or a symbol but when we look at world events benjamin netanyahu on october the first said he would attack iran's nuclear weapons program when it comes to iran's nuclear weapons program here's my advice distrust dismantle and verify Ladies and gentlemen, Israel will never acquiesce to nuclear arms in the hands of a rogue regime that repeatedly promises to wipe us off the map. Against such a threat, Israel will have no choice but to defend itself. I want there to be no confusion on this point. 
Israel will not allow Iran to get nuclear weapons. If Israel is forced to stand alone, Israel will stand alone. Yet in standing alone, Israel will know that we will be defending many, many others. Uh, grueling sanctions regime, they got that. They're paying nothing because they're not reducing in any way their nuclear uh, enrichment capability. So Iran got the deal of the century, and the international community got a bad deal. This is a very bad deal. Uh, and Italy, Israel utterly rejects it, and what I'm saying is shared by many, many in the regions, whether or not they express it publicly. Israel is not obliged by this agreement, and Israel will do everything it needs to do to defend itself and to defend the security of its people. That is true also of our negotiations with the Palestinians. I will never compromise on Israel's security and our vital interests, not in the face of any international pressure. I think the pressure has to be put where it belongs, that is, on the Palestinians who refuse to budge. But I think in any case, no amount of pressure will make me or the government of Israel compromise on the basic security and national interests of the state of Israel. And the people of Israel know this, and they support it, as they should. Well, what happens when he attacks Iran's nuclear weapons program is that Iran will retaliate. Both Israel and Iran have been preparing for this war for many years. This also points to the Ezekiel 38 and 39 Gog and Magog war, where Russia, who is in bed with Iran and the other nations, leads the attack on Israel. Even if the Gog and Magog war doesn't come immediately, as soon as Israel attacks Iran, the Middle East will go into conflict, oil prices will skyrocket, and the drunken sailor U.S. economy, U.S. dollar is going to hit the ground. And whenever that is, I don't know. They will attack Iran's nuclear weapons program. It will cause a war in the Middle East. Does the drunken sailor U.S. economy fall to the ground before this happens or after this happens or because this happens? Is this the final push that pushes the economy to the ground? I don't know. Nevertheless, you need to prepare. I need to prepare. Israel will attack Iran. Iran will respond. The whole Turkey and Saudi Arabia and all of those nations will be affected, even if it doesn't become the Gog and Magog War. The next blood red moon comes up October 2014. Wow! That is right there at the beginning of the judgment year, the sabbatical year that has not been kept. So this year of judgment is coming up. And then the following blood red moon comes up. And then the fourth blood red moon comes up. That's September the 28th, 2015, just after the sabbatical year. If these are signs of trouble and so on, the Gog and Magog War is probably going to fall right into that area. This is a year of preparation. Regardless of which war, regardless of how the economy falls, regardless of what goes on first or second, we need to prep. We need to prep now. These times were prophesied by the Lord Jesus Christ. When you see these things happen, the things going on in Jerusalem and Israel and Zion worldwide, when you see these things manifesting, Look up, for your redemption is drawing near. And start praying. Pray hard. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves. Let your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. The instructions the Lord Jesus Christ gave us is that we should pray that we are able to stand before the Son of Man. My friend, no one is able to stand before the Son of Man unless he is washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are none righteous, no, not one. 
We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let us pray now together and ask Almighty God to forgive our sin and wash us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just follow after me in prayer, but pray with your own faith and your own sincerity. Father God, that's right, just pray in faith after me. Father God, I ask you now to forgive all of my sin and wash me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and make me holy unto you. Baptize me now in the Holy Spirit and give me more power to resist temptations. I acknowledge that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for my sin and is soon to return. I forgive all of those people that I have resented or hated and I receive from you the free gift of salvation. I dedicate my life and commit my spirit to you. I ask you now to keep me strong in the time of testing and help me to stand before the Son of Man. I receive that as done. Amen. Thank you for praying with me, child of God. If you'd like to see more videos on the baptism of the Holy Spirit or on end time prophecy, please click the links at the end of the arrows. May God bless you. Peace be unto your house.